go live. I'm going live. I'm not sure what that does. Let's see. Ah, people are reacting. That's lovely. When people react, uh, I know I'm not alone out here in the void. Thank you very much. <laughs> so guys, everyone welcome. I'll give a few moments for folks to gather together. Does everyone have their supplies ready? Now, again, last week I think I spent a good half hour giving the spiel to everyone, just in case there were folks out there who hadn't been to the living room in person. Wait, I'm getting some... I'm getting some... Do you still need your laptop? Um, I don't think so. I think I can see messages pop up okay. here on the side. It's technology. Man, alive. I just thank my lucky stars. What an interesting time to be alive. Um... So as folks gather, as I was saying, last week I spent about a half hour giving the spiel to folks in case people out there hadn't actually been to the living room before because I realized a lot of times in, um, a lot of times in my online work in the social studio, I don't spend time, hey Annie, good afternoon to you too. Um, in the social studio, I don't necessarily give provide the same safe space uh, policy for folks as they're entering the virtual space, but it looks like we're going to be hanging out here for a couple of months or so. So I think it's, I would really love to encourage everyone to engage in that same way, in the same way that you do in the studio space, to be mindful of those principles here, if that's cool with everyone, which is being supportive of one another, encouraging, respectful, negotiate consent. I'm going to do my best at that. Um, it's strange when you're just talking to yourself a lot of the time, but let me know if I push any boundaries. Let me know if I'm crossing into weird territory. I'm here to learn, and if I can teach you what I need um, to be supported, then you can teach me that too. Okay, what's the next one? Of course, people taking care of yourself and knowing um, that taking care of yourself, you're taking care of other people too. Uh, in the studio, that looks like if folks come in who've been using or drinking, we'll invite them to come back on another day. Uh, no judgment about using or drinking or folks who use or drink. For us, it's just about communication and knowing that we can communicate with people effectively. We can only do our best. And for those folks who are gathering at the studio or this virtual pop-up studio, um, some of us might be in our own processes of recovery or harm reduction. So just to be mindful of those things when we're engaging with one another. Um, can't promise to be a trigger-free space, but we do our best. Um, mental health too. If someone's having a really difficult day out there and you realize that this isn't the space you need, not the activity you need, not the person you need to see right now, please feel free to take care of yourself. If we see, if we notice that you're struggling from on this side of the camera, we'll check in, um, but we might not be able to. So I'm really just giving everyone out there permission to take the best kind of care of yourselves that you can, to reach out for the supports that you need that are meaningful and helpful to you, um, and just to continue that process every day, every moment. And the last part of the spiel, and again, this is a fairly condensed spiel, the last part of the spiel, if anything makes you feel uncomfortable out there, uh, with what we're doing here, how we're engaging, please let us know. Um, don't feel like you got to suck it up or deal with it because times are tough. Don't feel like uh, you're mature and you've got, you know, you can handle it all on your own. That's the time when you should be reaching out. If it's not that bad, chances are it's bad enough already. So we can still work with one another to teach one another how we can be more supportive and let other folks know what it's like to be us and just increase that kind of um, agency in the sense of creative humaning, because I do believe 100 million percent that humaning is a creative skill as well. The art of living, right? I think we're all exploring that these days in new and exciting ways. Okay, well that's enough of a spiel. So uh, today I was imagining that we play with collage and this is partly because yesterday on the live stream Instagram chat we had, there were a few folks popping up talking about how they actually they wanted to do collage, or they were thinking about collage or revisiting collage in new ways. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of collage myself. I love it. I love putting pieces together. I love looking at the pieces that create the whole. Um, I like the mystery. Hello. It's so great to see you. It's so great to see people joining. Um, come on in. Welcome to the Art Hive. <laughs> Uh, so yes, so people were talking about collage and um, for me that's a very, it's a full of possibility. What I also like about it is it's something, it's a medium that tells my inner critic to kind of take a back seat because that uh, revisiting the safe space spiel again, that part of ourselves that is really nice to everyone else in the world, oftentimes we're really hard and on ourselves and cruel to ourselves sometimes. So we call that at the living room, we call that the inner critic. I have an entire choir of them. So if you've got one, don't worry, you're not alone. Um, it's important to learn how to talk back to those critics and perhaps even listen to them sometimes, acknowledge them so we know what they want us to hear. But it's not always useful. It's not always helpful, especially if our critics have been there a long time. Um, they may have once at one time helped us. They might have helped us cope. But now they're just getting in the way of our creative flow. So if you're having trouble with a critic, let me know, let someone around you know, talk to it and just say, hey, I got this, chill out, okay? Now, oh, you know what I'm hearing, guys? I decided today that I wanted to wear um, some jewelry because <sighs> my anxiety's been getting up there and uh, sometimes I really, you know, you notice in the studio sometimes I hold on to things, um, more ways than one, but jewelry I often, We'll do that with long necklaces. And today I've got um, my spoon that was made by uh, One Hummingbird Lane. Wendy made this, and I got it at one of our Handmade with Heart sales. I'm also wearing, hey, Carlos, hey, Maggie. Um, the inner critic is whack, Carlos. You got that right. Um, I'm also wearing this beautiful piece that was sent to me by my friend Dar in New York. Um, it's just really solid. It's got some edges. Uh, it feels good to hold on to, and I'm thinking about Dar today. I'm thinking about all our community members out there in New York, uh, New York City. I'm thinking about our friends in Quebec and Montreal. I'm thinking of friends and family in the UK and London, places that are really hard hit right now, and sending you lots of love. Um, so I thought I'd hold on to my spoon and that piece of New York that I carry around with me. Um, but you know what, they're making a lot of noise, as is my puppy over there, Alice, who's getting ready for her walk. Can you hear her? She needs a nail trim. Yeah, we'll get on that. <laughs> there may also be some cats floating for, through from time to time. Oh. Uh, if you hear or see the cats, that will surprise me, but Mama has been, Mama Cat has been attacking our plants uh, quite vigorously over the last few days. And I think it might be part of her self-care. Uh, so we're not gonna get in her way, but I might have to go save some plants. So if I dip out of frame to save some plants, that's, that's what that's about. And Maggie, you are right. So Maggie says, remember, it's okay to feel anxiety. Just know you're not alone. I'm gonna reflect that right back at everyone else out there. It's okay to feel anxious right now. These are extraordinary times and you might be feeling more anxiety than you normally do. That's because things aren't the kind of normal they used to be. It's a new normal, so it's okay. So today, feel what you gotta feel. Know you're not alone, okay? And just a reminder, there are so many other amazing supports out there. Do not, do not hesitate to reach out to them or for them if you need them, okay? All right. So my, my spoons in my New York are making a little bit of noise here. So I'm just gonna take them off. I'm still gonna keep them close by, but I'm gonna put them on my table. Okay. Let's see. Little set dressing there, my spoon, my New York, there we go. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Now, the other thing I wanted to do to start was have a little bit of a, oh, bye-bye, have a good walk. <laughs> And off Alice goes. <laughs> um, thanks for everyone who's been saying hi to Alice and things like that too. I appreciate that. Alice, the studio dog, who's really not a very good studio dog, she's going to be hanging around too and she will be making more posts. So every Wednesday, or no, every Monday, 
keep an eye out on our Facebook page for some Alice self-care tips because I've been learning a lot from her these days. Okay. <sighs> we're also going to remember to breathe. We're going to remember to breathe, Mary. That's what we're going to do. So um, for me, my very busy brain, I need a kind of active meditation process. I'm not very good at sitting still and being with my thoughts. Uh, I'm working on it, but I'm what I do enjoy doing is making that meditation process a little uh, active, externalizing it a little bit, which all that means really is doing a little bit of drawing. And I was looking over some old favorite YouTube posts and I stumbled across Linda Berry's uh, writing the Unimag unimaginable. Now for, use of, for those of you who aren't familiar with Linda Berry, she is a cartoonist and an illustrator, uh, a teacher, an extraordinary teacher, uh, just someone I want to be when I grow up, and I don't think I'm alone there. She has this fantastic drawing exercise that she uses to help her classes, to help her students ground themselves when they come into the space and just open up a little bit for new creative possibilities. So I think if you, or if you are okay with this, I'm going to start with that today. You're welcome to join me if you want. All you need for this is a piece of paper and a pen, a marker, a pencil crayon, um, anything that you feel comfortable drawing with. Now what she does is Linda Berry, the great Linda Berry starts uh, with the center of a spiral and then she asks her students to draw very mindfully, going at a pace that feels right to you just to start drawing a tightly wound spiral starting from the center and moving out. Now she says if the lines touch you get electrocuted, but I don't think so. I'm going to give lots of patience to myself today. I'm going to give lots of compassion like the studio proper there is no perfection allowed here so my hands are a bit wobbly that's okay if the lines touch that's okay I'm just going to continue drawing that spiral. And if you'd like to join me, please, please feel free. On the other hand, if you're just checking in to say hello, that's okay too. If you need to go take a break or do some stuff around your house or run to get some materials or if you have an appointment that you have to get to, that's okay. Don't feel bad if you've got to take care of yourself and do something different. If you want to be here but you just want to listen and not make art, or watch or have me on in the background. Someone yesterday on, over on Instagram was talking about that, how it was just kind of nice to have another voice out there that they knew. That's totally okay. We're figuring out what uh, the pop-up art studio, what this virtual space looks like and what you need it to be because again, community spaces, they're about the people. The people make the space. The people make the place. Cool. There we go. Hello, Tremors. Good to see you again. Now, I'm not sure oh, what Miss Barry thinks about starting again once your pen lifts off. But I'm just going to take a breath and I'm going to continue. There's a little experience there. Hello, information. Now she adds on to it as well. She invites people to feel uh, a bright white light at the top of their head. Kind of reminds me of a meditation I used to do back in theater school where 
Imagine that light is like a an egg breaking open your head. And the light is the yolk. And it kind of just, you let it run down. So the light flows down into your forehead, and down your face. It's flowing down the back of your head too, onto your neck. And imagine the light. Your chin, and your throat, your shoulders. And you just let that light kind of pour over you. Down your shoulders, down your back, over your front and your belly. And you feel that light at the base of your spine. And if you're sitting down somewhere, you want to feel that light under you too, why not? Feel the light in your thighs going into your knees, spilling over your kneecaps. Down your shins to your feet. And you just want to keep that spiral going. <sighs> Remembering to breathe. And I'm just focusing on my spiral here, so I haven't looked up. I don't know if there are any questions coming in. I'm just going to put a pause on those. I'll revisit those in a second. I'm just going to keep on doing this spiral. Tightly wound spiral, a delightfully imperfect, wonky spiral. And letting that light flow. If you're just joining us on this Facebook live stream pop-up art hive, we're doing a Linda Berry exercise where she invites her students to draw from the center outwards a tightly wound spiral. Just as a way of calming down, of checking in. And boy, I needed it today. You can do it with any material you have on hand that you feel comfortable working with. How big do you make it? I don't know. As big as it wants to be. So spiral, what do you say? Maybe it wants a little bit more. <sighs> okay. I think that's that. I think that's my spiral. Thanks for hanging in, folks. Now, as long as I'm here, I'm going to think about what I want to, not so much what I want to make, but uh, I want to set an intention for myself, which is perhaps saying more about how I want to make the thing I want to make today. So I'm going to be doing collage here at the Pop-Up Art Hive. Again, you can make whatever you want, okay? Feel free to create whatever you want or need to create. I'm not the boss of you. I don't know what kind of creative impulse you got going on inside of you. You alone know that, okay? So if you want to do your own thing while I'm doing collage, again, that is totally okay, all right? And again, I'm going to echo Maggie here. Remember to breathe, everybody, and your anxiety 
It's okay to feel it. You are not alone. Okay? Time for some coffee. Hmm. Can I just uh, send a shout out to the folks at Brew Wizards Board Game Cafe? Um, mm, I, before the studio closed, I have a confession to make everybody. I, I kind of took one of those bags of coffee that we had left over from them, from their beautiful uh, holiday donation, and I brought it home with me. I was genuinely out of coffee, and it's really good coffee, and it makes me think of them every time I have one. I have one coffee a day in the afternoon. Cheers. Okay, so back to intentions. I think the way I want to create today, I want to create kind of peacefully. I want to have some fun. I don't want to feel like I have to finish anything. I don't want it to feel like homework. That would suck. Uh, speaking of that, I gave myself some homework at the last uh, pop-up art hive we had last Wednesday. And I haven't even finished it, but I do want to show you how far I've come. So last week, again, this theme of spirals coming up again, we were working on gratitude wheels. So let's see what I can do here. I'm not sure which way I need to show this to you. But there, if you can see it, I took the larger piece that I was working on and I moved it. I kind of whittled it down and returned to the original graphic that I'd made. I just wanted to condense it somehow and contain it a little bit more. As you can see, I'm still working on it, but that center, you know, what I'm grateful for and everything radiating, radiating out, nature, community, friends, my body, my mind, creativity, connectivity, life, family, it's all there. But I wanted to give you an update about where I was at with that. So that's it. With my spiral, obviously I needed to feel grounded. I needed to feel peaceful. So I think, yeah, I'm going, I'm not going to put pressure on myself today to complete anything in the time we have. I want to encourage you to do the same, just to play. And if I'm going to create something, I wonder, sometimes I like to give myself a question before I do collage. This has its roots in soul collage, but also the witness intention creativity process by Pat B. Allen. It's, it can feel really powerful just to put a creative suggestion out there into the universe and see if it returns to me somehow, if I allow it to. So today, hmm, perhaps that one might be, what do I need? What do I need to know about feeling more grounded? What do I need to know about simplicity? How can I have more simplicity in my life? It's, yeah, something between those two, grounded, be feeling and being grounded, and being able to embrace simplicity and ease. Um, I'm very good at making things complicated. I don't know if anyone else out there is. I'm really good at it. All right. So simplicity, ease, being grounded. I might write that down on my spiral before I put this aside. Because who knows? This might come back into my collage. We'll see where it goes. I love holding on to bits and pieces that I've created. Even things that... Uh, didn't work out. Sometimes at the studio we'd use up leftover paint to finger paint with and essentially kind of creating our own scrapbooking paper. Uh, I love holding on to those and putting them into a file I have with other collage materials because they can come back and become really interesting elements to future works. How's everybody out there doing? That aside. Is anybody else out there going to do collage? Let me know. If you're working on something different and you want to let me know what you're working on, just let me know. All right, so I was hoping that collage would also be something that everyone uh, could participate in if they had the materials. Just need a few magazines, some newspapers, even old advertisements, junk mail, things like that can be used old letters, old postcards, um, greeting cards, bits and pieces that you have around the house, fabric, 
You can um, you can incorporate fabric into your collage if you like as well. In fact, I might be doing a whole video on a fabric collage piece that I did, but it needs a sewing machine, so I didn't want to haul that out for this video, but we'll see. Um, now, any other interesting folks out there, uh, you might have one of these. So I've got a couple of these folders that I, I have <laughs> around the house, and I'm not even kidding. I wish I was. Um, basically, every time I sit down to make a collage, I end up pulling a lot of material that um, isn't necessarily what I wanted or needed for that specific image, but it still speaks to me, and I still love the image. So I put it aside in a folder where I have a whole other bunch of loose, uh, loose pages and, and things like that. Kitty cat, what are you doing up there on the counter? Oh man, do I leave the video or do I do something gentle and loving like throw something soft at her? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see what I got here. Forgive me for just a moment. I'm just going to, uh, kitty cat, off the, off the counter. Here. Hey, Mallory. Yeah, no, don't do that. Okay? I love you, but don't. Jeez. Hi, I'm back. Uh, yeah, loose pieces of collage materials, images that I love, but I they just didn't seem right for the piece I was working on at the time. Because unlike um, some folks who do collage, uh, not only like setting intentions before, but they really love sticking to a theme. I've tried this. That doesn't work for me. I am more about going with the flow, I guess, and seeing what speaks to me as I go. Sometimes that means that images are popping out that don't make sense to me. Sometimes, not only do they not make sense, they um, sometimes they're downright scary or confusing. And so I try not to be too judgmental as the images come to me, I suppose. I just tear them out, cut them out, I put them aside. And sometimes you see things like that. And, uh, hmm, to your help. I will love the light for it shows me the way, but I will endure the darkness because it shows me the stars. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna cut that out. I'm gonna just put that in front of my face wherever I go. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, here. Sometimes I cheat and I do this. That, yeah, that, that's, that's lovely. Yeah, okay. That might show up in a collage, it might not. That might just become something I dangle before my face every single day. Um, hmm. So in this part of the process of collage, I've set a kind of guideline and intention, a question for myself. And now what I want to do is just look for images. I don't want to decide necessarily what I want to do with the images yet. I'm just letting them pop out at me, I'm letting them speak to me. Obviously something about jars is speaking to me. Let's see. And if I find myself getting too, too caught up in any one magazine, reading an article, or, you know, that's okay. Um, but if that begins to happen too much, I might just shake it up and decide, choose another magazine, pull another magazine to look up, put that one aside to read. But speaking of reading... I know that some of my placement students are working on another amazing uh, Facebook Friday where we will be posting some more prompts uh, for creative writing. Uh, I think there's also a prompt today about writing that has inspired you or helped you or you know helped you on your self-care journey, all of that. I forget that I can, oh Esther, I forget that I can scroll up on Facebook sometimes. So my apologies, folks. I wait. For, I'm so selfish and self-centered. I just look for people to come to me. It's no, no, I got to scroll. I got to work on this. 
Oh, so Karen, Esther, oh my gosh, so nice to hear you. Ah, oh. oh, Karen, it'd be good to hear your voice too. I think there'll be a lot more of this happening in the future one way or another. And Sarah, oh, that's lovely. And Bridget, <laughs> you know what? Uh, B, B says if I send that quote to her that I just read, she'll make something and uh, make a beautiful calligraphy sign for me. Um, yeah, I might actually commission a bunch of them and then I can just put them everywhere. That's, uh, you just, any reminders, any reminders that help, whatever helps us get through, right? Whatever helps, whatever works. And again, sending so much love to everyone out there. Ah. Now, wah. Now, I also want to, uh, send a shout out to all the artists that create these images for magazines because what we're really doing is taking other people's art and incorporating it into our art. So this isn't something I'm going to sell. This is something that is just for me. Uh, but every once in a while you're going to come across something that you think, who did that? And where is the credit? Where is the credit? I don't know. That's going into the file. Let's see, can I do this? Safety first, everyone. So what have folks been working on out there? I know B's been doing lots of collage. No, not lots of collage. Oh, that bird, I know. Now B's been doing lots of calligraphy, lots of writing. We were talking about collage yesterday in our epic uh, Instagram conversation that got cut off after an hour because me and technology. Oh, and just enjoying chatting with people. Um, what have other folks been working on there? I know that some of you have been busy working and doing placement still. So thank you to all the folks who are out there continuing with their work during this time, helping other people maintain um, wellness, maintain some kind of routine, helping get supplies to us, helping take care of people's health and well-being. If you're a part of that world right now, thank you so much. It's, it can be difficult uh, in the best of times to do that, but doing it with limited resources and limited access, I can only imagine. And just like for the students who are out there, um, hang in. I know a lot of you are on the last few weeks of this term, whether your term extends beyond that, I don't know. Hmm, amethyst, yes please. If you're just getting through, if you are figuring out how to navigate this new online way of studying without having any connection to your classmates, your peers, or the folks that you were perhaps doing placement with, uh, hang in there, okay? We all get it. I have a whole bunch of amazing students and everybody's struggling right now. We're trying to figure out how we can transfer, transfer, um, transfer what we did and how we learned and to a new way of experiencing things, a new way of studying things. Um, if you're struggling with that, you're not alone. Okay? And I think everyone in the system, the systems that we move within understands that. It's, it's just a part of the process of figuring out what happens next and how do we do it and helping provide the best possible experience for students as well, right? So don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to communicate. If you're struggling, if you have questions, again, oh, more birds, hello. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out and let people know. None of us are experts in what's happening right now. No one expected any of this. Well, some people did. Let's be fair. Um, but a little bit of dark humor. Oh, true. But I think even the people who perhaps knew that was coming had didn't really know how we'd encounter it, how we'd engage with this kind of... Um, I'm not going to call it a lifestyle. I'm not going to call it living necessarily. But this version of normal, this version of new... newness... 
Hmm. Ooh, ooh. Saucy. Hmm. Sometimes I think people in positions of power or positions of authority, um, other people look to them like they have more information or more knowledge or more understanding or insight about what's happening. Um, yeah, dark humor does get us through. Uh, but sometimes they don't. I think most times everyone is just doing their best to pretend and some of us can pretend a little bit better because we have a little more experience uh, and not experience. Um, I think just understanding that we get through more time, more experience, surviving, more experience, enduring, right? And we do our best to endure as positively as we can. Hmm. And hopefully we make the best possible choices for ourselves that help us move forward and help us kind of liberate ourselves from this like the sense of feeling stuck or hardened to things. We can survive. We do survive. We get through. And we grow. Whale. Okay, is any... Oh, hello, Alpha. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. All right. Whale. To go with my birds. Hmm. And what are folks working on out there? It's okay if you're not. I'm just going to keep asking that question until somebody, somebody replies. Hmm. Meh. I chose a small page to work on. I wanted to give a sense of... Um, Again, I love containment, that idea of giving a framework, a structure, something to hold things in. Sometimes when I use giant pieces of paper for collages, uh, it's just too much for me. It's a little too overwhelming. And yeah, I get intimidated too by that white space staring back up at you. So if I make it a smaller page, then I know I can always add on. Hey, Laura, welcome. Laura Brown, everybody, joining us. We've just been talking, well, I've been talking, I've been rambling about collage, about intention. Laura, you are, uh, you are, I, I adore you. I adore your collages as well. Your process, your creativity, how you incorporate, um, it's not just about images, it's about texture and line. It's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pieces and everyone tells a story. Any tips for us folks out here who are doing collage? Any one piece of advice that you'd pass along to everybody? Some of you, you might have been lucky enough to have been at the studio about maybe about a month ago when Laura did a, a collage workshop. I think there were several hundred different names that we had for the workshop. Uh, we settled on everything about collage you wanted to know, everything you ever wanted to know about collage, but were afraid to ask. Um, but I think there were, there were so many other potential titles. I think one was like Collage Chaos. Let's see, there was... Hmm. Hmm. Again, I, uh, sometimes I do not know why certain images, whoa, jump out at me. And I'm not sure how to use them, but wowza, okay. Your fantastic image, but I'm going to leave you for now. I'm going to come back to you another time. Is that gum? See, sometimes you just get caught up, you get carried away. That's for another time. All right. I think I've got enough pieces. Oh wait, I want to go through one more, one or two more. 
And I hope this is okay. Just me flipping through magazines, looking for images. Oh. Now, another fabulous thing about being at the studio. Where are my scissors? The donations that we receive are so fabulous. Um, and I always, you know, remind people it's not just about traditional fine art supplies. It's any kind of, uh, like, you can make art with just about anything out there. <laughs> um, and these these magazines when they come in old magazines are one of my favorite favorite donations to receive we can easily be overwhelmed by them but the quality of the color the strangeness of what people used to feel was um, <laughs> just another document of how we live our lives and how we lived our lives and who knows who knows how people will perceive us in the future um, this is this is an awesome crocheted thing for a baby, a snuggy baby thing. I wish I had one like that. But that poor baby, I don't know if you can see that baby's face, that baby. Oh, poor baby, you do not look happy. Oh dear. All right, onwards and upwards. Did I see birds? Guys, I think uh, there's a bird theme going on today with me. which I find pretty interesting considering one of my intentions that I set was uh, being grounded. <laughs> so Laura did come back. I'm wondering, I, after the pressure I put on with her asking. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, advice from Laura, the collage queen. Just let images that pop, like just start with images that pop out at you. Yeah, that's it, Laura. That's the best advice I can give. Don't feel like you have to squish it in or fit it in or use all the pieces that come up. There will always be time oh, for another. There will be more collages. The future is full of collages. Mm, colors too. Yeah, 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 B, finding things that speak to you on your theme. See, that's an interesting piece though because if I, that's what, like other people that works really well for them to look for that message coming back at them. For me, it's fascinating, again, that it, it seems in some way, at least at a first glance, that birds would be the opposite of what my theme was. I gotta trust that instinct, though. Trust that it's saying something. I might not always understand it right away. Yours for only two ninety five, dollars The Crafts Jamboree book. <gasps> Folks, if anyone has that book out there, let me know. I want to see that book. I bet it's horrifying and lovely all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, B, the wisdom of B, even when you try to be grounded, you're still trying to fly. Yeah, I suppose so. It's like yoga practice when they talk about, you know, anchoring into the floor, but there's always a part of you that's lifting out as well, lifting up as well. Ah, the opposites, what life is made out of. All right. I've got another magazine over there, but I, oh, maybe, no, I don't think so. Maybe I'll put a bookmark there. I want to start arranging and trimming and getting things down. So Laura B, are you working on collages right now? It's okay if you're not. Hmm. So now the part of the process for me, certain things I know I want, I know right away that they need shape to go in my image. I don't know how I know that. It just feels, feels right. It feels like the case. So those I can trim down right away. Other pieces I might leave a little more open. They might become backgrounds. I might want to use them in a different way. What I should have suggested at the beginning of this as well, along with your materials, is having a scrap bucket or a little trash pill to put your paper clippings into. Of course, I didn't think of that. 
So I'm going to have lots of bits of paper everywhere. No worries, I've got time to clean them up. That's where we're at today. Let's see. <laughs> ah, we've got bees working. So maybe not art, but we've got folks working on collage out there. <laughs> folks who are planning to nap, but collaging is a better idea. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> no, I'm not the boss of you, but napping. That's a beautiful thing to do. And there is an art, the art of napping. Don't let me take you away from napping. Oh my gosh. So what am I going to do here? I think I want one of these to be my background. I'm just going to do a light cut out around so I can still use a lot the rest of that image if I want to. And if you're just joining in, what have we done so far today? I've done a mini spiel. We've done a Linda Berry spiral exercise. I've thrown a piece of fabric at one of my cats. Hmm. And now we're working on collage, pulling images, trimming images. Encouraging and reminding everyone to take good care of yourselves. We talk about self-care quite a lot at the studio. We talk about it. There's a lot of talk these days about self-care, but sometimes I wonder... Uh, I have to revisit it myself from time to time to check in and say, what does that even mean? The phrase sometimes loses its meaning and we just end up saying self-care, 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 but like it's, um, <laughs> I don't know, something you can access really simply or easily. Uh, but self-care is work. It's a beautiful kind of work, but it is work. I think a lot of folks out there might agree. I think in the best of times, once you have that self-care, kind of, if we can call it a muscle, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's, it can perhaps become easier. It can become a little more like second nature, but uh, I think Self-care has something to do with awareness and bringing that attention back to that, that focus, back to consciously caring for yourself rather than unconsciously caring for yourself. But yeah, what like if folks have other ideas about what self-care is, oh, nice. So Courtney, self-care is finding out who you are within. <gasps> <sighs> That's, uh, oh my God, yes. If you don't, if we don't know who we are, if we don't know who we really are, if we don't get to know ourselves, which again, I think is not a one-stop kind of thing. I think it's something we continue to do our whole life as we grow, as we change. But if we don't do that to start, what are we doing? We're, can we really take care of ourselves in a meaningful way if we don't know who we are, who are know ourselves? Ah, oh, Courtney, <sighs> Ah, if I had a mic, I'd wait, no, I'm not going to, no, no, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you. What else? What else do we think? What else do we know? Sometimes it's hard to put into words, but you might know it. You might somehow, you might have an idea. You might just have a sense. Well, I'm lucky because if I have a camera on me, I can show you. <laughs> I can do things like, 
because sometimes that says so much more than any word or set of words can say. Hmm, Anne, self-care, becoming more resilient, adding, okay, Anne, adding you stressors, not just stressors, you stressors. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, good health. Oh, uh, yeah, good, healthy things like art. So these things are the opposite of stressors, so things that bring relief, that bring relaxation, not just a, a concept of relaxation, but an actual physical lived-in experiential sense of relaxation that can confront those kind of stress feelings that we have like my shoulders how they go up or my fists how they clench being able to breathe and let the go physically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I'm not sure Anne's pretty remarkable oh Courtney <laughs> and to have the um, Tears are such a fabulous thing to, to know that I contributed in a positive way, hopefully, to bringing tears to someone's eyes. That is a beautiful thing because crying is something that is all about self-care. Self-care is all it can be about crying. And one day soon we will get back, B, are you listening, to the concept of the public crying league? We will do that because we want to make public crying something that everybody does. Ah, excellent. And self-care from B. Also taking time to be mindful of my thoughts, which influence my feelings, my actions, and behaviors. Hello, Anthony and Alice, back from their walk. Oh, well, it looks so sunny out there. Guys, thank you for joining me on at least in Oshawa, what seems to be a really sunny day. Because chances are, if you're watching this, you're inside. So thank you. Um, let's back to that. To be mindful of thoughts which influence feelings and actions and behaviors. Yes, 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 yes. That cycle of things, right? If we can catch one of them, bring attention to one of them to interrupt it somehow, everything can change. Everything can shift. And it doesn't even need to shift in a really big way to make a difference. That's the beauty of that, interrupting that cycle. You know, that's like the inner critic, what we, what we call the inner critic in a lot of other places, you know, Sometimes folks refer to that as negative self-talk. Uh, it could be, um, you know, the the myths, the stories that have been told about ourselves, that we've been told about ourselves and somehow accepted. And uh, it's about telling a new story, challenging those narratives so that we can break free from them somehow, live a new story. <laughs> yeah. Do, does everyone need a... A reminder about unclenching shoulders, or maybe you can start by just physically doing this. This is an attractive look, I bet. <sighs> Feel free to do that every little bit, every once in a while. It's fun. <laughs> the public crying club, yes. Tears are so good. Uh, if anyone else out there was like me, um, I was actually having a very difficult time crying lately. Late, normally crying is something that happens. I I love crying. I love crying in a broadcast news Holly Hunter kind of way. I will use it as a tool to just let go of stuff and feel something different. And that beautiful boost you get after a good cry. That is it a serotonin rush? I'm not sure. That love. That's such a great, great thing. Um, but for the last couple of weeks, I'd been my brain had been so preoccupied with things figuring out um just figuring out maybe what i was feeling in the first place or maybe being afraid to feel i think that was perhaps closer to the truth there being afraid to feel being afraid to <sighs> every once in a while i know this is not the case i know this is not the case but every once in a while i fall into the trap that a lot of us have been kind of conditioned to think over time that if you begin to feel something it will overwhelm you that you'll get lost in it over time and as an older person an oldie or getting oldie um, I know that's not the case it's my choice to surrender to something to have it uh, how I want to have it be a part of my life how I want to learn about it use it Crying is one of those things. It's not even a feeling. It, crying is an action. So when I'm crying, I'm acknowledging that feeling. I'm letting it speak. And 
I can make sense of it. I can understand what it wants me to know, and I can use it to move forward. But for the last couple of weeks, for whatever reason, it was hard for me to do that. It was hard to find the stillness to hear that voice. Um, and then it came back in a big way yesterday, though. Crying is something that I personally need to do. So the Public Crying Club details uh, forthcoming. To be, to be coming coming soon, coming your way soon, we'll keep you posted. And Courtney, I will say hello to Anthony and Alice on your behalf. Oh, no. Alice has been a really good teacher. So if anyone has animals in their life right now, I'm sure we can all learn from them. If anyone is near a window right now, open up that window so you can hear the sounds. Nature. Spring is here, everybody. It is here. All right, this whale. So I've got birds, I've got whales, I've got ice, I've got water, I've got embroidery. Whatever this image is going to be, it's going to be interesting. And again, folks, if you're joining us or if you joined us, if you're part of the conversation, feel free to take care of yourself, take walks, take a break, do what you got to do, eat your food, put the kettle on, take, go outside for a moment, take a deep breath of that gorgeous air. Ta-da! Ooh! Speaking of not being able to let out tears, cry-stipated. Cry-stipated. Tear-stipated? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's a similar feeling at the other end. Yeah. <laughs> you. I think I might be ready to start gluing things down a little bit. Just the, the background, perhaps. All right. Now, some people like using different kinds of glue for collage. Glue sticks um, don't necessarily adhere forever. We know this. They kind of dry out and the images begin to peel off. But that's actually one of the things that I love about working with glue sticks because uh, this, they're very forgiving and depending on the thickness of the paper that you're using, you can peel things off and replace, like adjust things as you go. All right. If someone out there wants to design a logo for the public crying uh, club, just saying. Maybe if we have a logo, it'll happen. <laughs> and then we can put it on the backs of jackets, we can make patches. So in the collages, I don't know what that dialect was, folks. I apologize. Um, I I like giving a big background to the work I do. Sometimes it gets completely covered, but again, uh, it gives an option to having that white page stare back up at me. Um, and for whatever reason, it it usually does have something to say about the original intention I set. What? I do not know. Is it something about being frozen? Is it something about the cold? Is it something about channels moving, something moving in between that which is frozen? I don't know. Laura, are you working on a collage? 
and Annie just said, you're hearing Roy Oberson. I listened. I, I know I don't live near you, but from, I was, no Roy Oberson, but I got birds. I can hear traffic in the distance. Squirrel fight. Oh my gosh. Nature, huh? If you have the time, if you have the space, if you have even a moment in your day just to go outside and or put your ear to a window, if nothing else, and just listen. In theater school, we used to, uh, there was an exercise we used to do where we would, you start, uh, it's about how we listen and the consciousness we bring to it again. Uh, and what we do is we'd start, we'd imagine that there were these different bubbles of distance around ourselves. So, um, and if anyone knows where this practice comes from, let me know because our teachers probably stole it from somewhere. Um, you, so we'd start listening to what's directly around you. So maybe just what's in your immediate space. So I'm hearing the computer buzzing. I'm hearing the birds in the background. I hear kind of a, just a general hum from the house. And then I expand it. You expand it a few more meters and listen for what's there. So hearing the birds, hearing the squirrels, hearing things in other people's yards, it's expanding again. And you just expand and you expand and you expand until it gets to the universe. Just keep on listening and trust what you're hearing. Trust what you're hearing. And you come back from that. It's impossible not to feel present after that because you're just one part of this beautiful, beautiful world. All right. Ha, ha, ha. Hmm. 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 Uh, bye, Courtney. Have a wonderful nap. Enjoy your self-caring. And what time is it, actually? Oh, okay. You're still good on time. Like I was saying, I'm not going to rush to try and finish this today. And I will try to complete it before next week so I can show you what I've been working on. And if you folks out there create any collages or works of art or anything out of today that you'd like to share with us or share with the community, please, please feel free. You can post it in the comment section below this video. Whatever happens, whatever, however we emerge from this difficult time, I'm, I'm really hopeful that it's, I'm hopeful that we'll have some new lessons, some new lessons is too homeworky, but that we'll perhaps have a new practice of engaging with one another, which is a little bit more mindful, which is a little bit more appreciative.
Now this is the kind of work that if you had an exacto knife handy, the kind of cutting I'm doing here, you could, it might be faster to cut out some of these things with an exacto knife. All these little bits and pieces. So maybe I'm just going to do a gesture of the cutting for now and I'll come back and I'll trim them up later when I know, when I have a better idea how I want to use them. Boop, boop. Oh, come on. Are folks in more of need need of out there. I'm wondering about that too. Hmm. Hmm. Feels like the explorations of self-care might be something that are very valuable to folks. Conversations about what it actually is. Things that we can visualize that help ourselves. be hmm, meditating using an image of being in a cocoon or as though you're a bear in a den oh yeah that feeling of um, safety security having knowing your space being able to feel out where that space begins and ends that can be a really powerful thing as long as you're in charge of it knowing that you can leave it when you want to but it can help control the other things that try and get in while you're meditating. The power of visualization is uh, such an important one, such an important one. And I think it's easy. It's one, another thing we take for granted, the ability to visualize, the ability to imagine. For a lot of folks, it's very difficult. It can be difficult. And if you are one of those people out there, that's okay. It's, it's something that can also be developed over time. That's what the art of humaning is all about strengthening, reconnecting with our ability to imagine other possibilities, to realize that we can transform one thing into another, whether that's a thought or an idea. Um, the ability to imagine, to visualize, all of those things are things that we can strengthen, that we can work on together, or individually, if you like. Oh my goodness, this is definitely taking some time. So here, this is where Impatient Mary kicks in, and I shouldn't be impatient, but I want to move on to some other art pieces. I'm not quite sure how this will be used. So let's do this. Do, 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 do. That is the child in me going, come on! <laughs> I can't be the only one that has that child, right? There are others out there. Boop. <sighs> I think 
that might live somewhere down there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and more jars. Ah, Mary. Hmm. And folks who are here with us, folks who are joining us, folks who are still with us, uh, again, always open to feedback. Let me know if there are things you want to see. Let me know if there are things, uh, whether it's activities or conversation themes. Uh, let me know what you what would be helpful for you. If there are things that I'm doing that are not helpful, let me know as well. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. The quicker, if you have like having those uh, exacto knifey cutter thingies, it does make things quicker. But, hmm, do not know what those jars want to do there. Don't know yet. Hmm. We shall see. I'll put them aside for now. I love it, sharing tips, tips of the trade, tools that we use. I've seen use, Laura use X-Acto knives before. I know there's some other things out there, almost like pens, like uh, with ceramic, ceramic blades, so they wouldn't necessarily uh, cut to the human who works with them, but they work really well on paper. I don't know. Will it we eagerly await Laura's reply? Safety, exactly. Safety first. Safety always. So I think a parrot wants to be there. Again, not save those other parrots. Amethyst. Taking some time. To shake up my shoulders, twist a bit. Hmm. Not today, amethyst crystals. Not today. One day. Ooh, yes, Anne Marie. Anne Rose. Anne, 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 Annie, Annie, Annie. Lee Valley. That's the thing I was thinking about. Lee Valley has a really cool ceramic uh, blade thingy, but it's uh, almost like a pen that you use. I think. The idea was that you'd use it for wrapping paper or something like that. It always comes out in the holiday edition of their catalog. Um, I'm a bit of a Lee Valley junkie. I know. So uh, that's just the, I could just spend hours walking around that place. Um, they have to kick me out sometimes. <laughs> that's so, that's so, uh, that's, oh, uh, yeah, the privilege. <laughs> Check out Lee Valley if you haven't already for the delightful things you didn't know you needed, but now you can't live without. This episode of Pop-Up Art Hive is brought to you by Lee Valley. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a little bit, it, it's that time, that's that time of the, the live stream again, folks. I'm getting a little weird. <laughs> Coffee time. <laughs> <sighs> so what will I do with you, bird? <sighs> this bird is exceptional, but I think I might hold on to it for another collage. I might. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with you yet. And yes, I am talking to the paper and the image. I do it all the time. Nothing wrong with that, folks. Own your weirdness. Let's see. <laughs> what else have I got over here? I have this Cracker Jack thing. And there's a surprise inside. Okay. Let's see what kind of surprise. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's a mer merfolk mermaid sticker. Okay, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere, that 
should live somewhere. Did I swear again, Anne? Do I have a swear jar? Uh, I started one last week. You are right. I also started one for uh, face touching. Um, I don't think, I don't know if I've, I've sort of come very close a few times to touching my face uh, and swearing. Have I sworn today? Oh man, let me know if I have. The swear jar is in the kitchen, but I will, I will make a deposit if I have sworn. I will, just in case there's kids watching. I don't know if there are, or there may be people who just don't like swearing. That's okay. I'm trying to be uh, more mindful of it. Let's see. Oh yeah, that bird. That's why I'm gonna hold on to it. Sometimes when things jump out at you that are so graphically delicious, that is a work of art just on its, on its own. We'll come back to that. Oh, I haven't cussed yet? Thank you, Anne. See my community. You, you've got my back. <laughs> Let's see. Um, now, I don't know if this even exists anymore. The Columbia Record House kind of people out there, and they used to mail these little things, and they're like little stamps of uh, records, eventually, DVDs, CDs. Uh, I tried saving them all at one point just because I was fascinated by the idea, kind of that, that thing in us humans that wants to collect, collect them all. Um, uh, and every once in a while, I revisit them because there might be something in here that jumps out, something that needs to be in the collage, a little sneaky something. Don't know though. Are you guys seeing anything? Hmm. Not today. Not right now. But I will keep it handy. And this piece. This piece just keeps coming back to me. Again, from the Lee Valley catalog. Um, yeah, oh, that. Clock faces also end up popping up into my work quite frequently. Don't know about you. Now I'm trying to keep these little pop-up art hives to about an hour and a half time. Mostly because I understand that people who dip in even if, you know, I can't see you, I don't know who's listening or watching, but I do know that even with permission to leave, that sometimes it's difficult to turn someone off or close a computer on them <laughs> when they're engaging with you. So that's why I have limited the time of this pop-up art hive, because I want to give time for people to create, to do what they need to do. Uh, again, permission to turn me off anytime you want. Go away, weird art lady. Uh, if folks would like this to be shorter, let me know. If folks would like the pop-up art hive to be longer, let me know. If folks would like the pop-up art hive to maybe happen at a different time, let me know. We'll see what we can do. One of the challenges um, during this time for me so far um, and as always, is keeping things manageable. I think there, again, there was that initial rush to want to do things to uh, be a part of some kind of change or health or wellness, providing something for people. For those of us who are always used to being so active all the time and trying to do those things. <laughs> um, 
After that rush kind of calmed down, there was a, a sense of wanting to know if this was helping, if it was something that people needed or if it was just what I needed. And that is the thing I want to keep on top of. And for anyone else out there who's doing virtual art hives, it's a really interesting challenge. Uh, or even facilitating your own live streams. Who are you doing it for? It's okay if it's for you. It has to be for the facilitator at some point, right? Um, but where, especially in the concept, the world of art hives, where do you let the community in? And one of the ideas that I'm playing around with, in my brain, my very busy brain, is, again, remembering who my resources, like, who are my resources? My resources are the people. It's you guys, right? Who uses the space? Who comes to the space? Who knows the space? Who knows the community? Uh, and one of the things I've started to do, very, doing very, very, very slowly, uh, but I'm hoping to do more, and depending how things unfold, again, we don't know how long things will look like this, right? Uh, but I want to open it up. I, if it's just me tuning in and doing this every day, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? I know that there are other amazing voices, other amazing creators, other amazing community members out there, many of whom are still with us listening and watching today. I'm going to invite you to play with the idea of what if I were to invite you folks to host some live streams on the living room's behalf. Uh, maybe some Instagram, live Instagram chats, too. And one of the reasons there, too, is having people with lived experience in certain areas that I do not, right? Our community is vibrant. Our community is diverse. Our community is astonishing, astonishingly resilient. Hmm. Uh, and I think it's important to reflect the different faces of that, how that looks. And it's, it shouldn't always be about me, right? God, that would be boring. So if you're listening and this is something that appeals to you and you want to learn more, a lot of you are very familiar with the living room already, uh, let me know. Reach out and let's talk about it. Let's talk about figuring out ways to bring the community back into our virtual community space. Yeah? Oh, there's some exciting, OK. Yay, all right, this is good to know. So I'm already getting some positive responses out there. On oh, Annie, thank you for letting me know. You're feeling <sighs> super calm, creatively inspired, so grateful. Likewise, it's good to know that, it's good to know that that's one of the potential impacts, <laughs> results of these events. And it's not about me, that's a thing. I think it's, again, the place is the people. The people make the place. So it's a, the combination of us coming together, the combination of everyone who tunes in or listens. Even if we don't see you commenting, uh, you're still contributing energy. As artsy-fartsy as that may sound, you're still a part of our community. So I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you uh, reaching out, checking in, having us on in the background. Whatever it is you might be doing right now, I am so very grateful for that. And we can, we can feel that energy. So thank you. Hmm. Ah, uh, Laura. Yeah, this for for folks who feel comfortable enough chatting, um, never be afraid to chat. Sometimes, if you have a fancy Facebook name or something, I may not recognize who you are right away. Um, but when you uh, the kind of chatting conversations that happen through these events are always so healing and helpful for me as well. And it helps me learn, helps me grow, helps inspire me. Uh, and if you're missing my voice, you, you know I'm missing your voice, right? And it's funny how you begin to appreciate things about the spaces you were in that at the time you think, oh, I'm never going to miss that. And then you do. It's just one of those strange things, right? Yeah. Everything becomes precious in times where you cannot, where you're not allowed to access it. Just one of those weird human things again. 
So I've got a whole bunch of ingredients here, folks. Gingers. And these little birds. How will these little birds become involved? just saying random words. Okay, and this. This little guy's been hanging out with me for years. I'm not even kidding. At least six years I've carried this piece with me. Um, still, no, not ready yet. Put you back in the folder. Okay, so these are some of the ingredients I have for my collage. I'm not going to rush to try and figure out where everything goes. I need to take some time with that, but I do find it fascinating looking at kind of color, like the colors that are popping out here. What shares, you know, the, the parrot and that little, that beautiful embroidery, the jars, the birds, the gems, the clock, the slightly strange nautical bird theme that's happening. Maybe um, maybe it's not about flying at all. Maybe being grounded is about being a pirate. I don't know. I don't know. There's a tiny, there's a like a tall ship in the center of that clock there. I don't know. <laughs> Folks, I want to let you know too, before we wrap up today, uh, there's an amazing uh, virtual art hive that some folks have started out there. And I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I want to. It's uh, run by some amazing folks who uh, are really lovely and connected to the like the Montreal art hive scene as well. So there's some um, beautiful, beautiful folks who are a part of it. Uh, I'm going to search up for that link and I'm going to look to share it tomorrow because it's Thursday, it's kitchen sink day, so anything goes. If you guys have stuff that you want to share with me so that I can post tomorrow, please let me know, send it my way. Um, but you don't have to stop creating just because this ends. So if you're in a groove, that's all good. Um, the one thing that's different about this other hive as well is that it's, I think they're exploring art hive through Zoom. So many people can be heard and seen at the same time. That is a kind of cool thing. So uh, I want to put, put up the link. Feel free to check it out and let me know what you think about it, okay? Um, and yeah, as far as the symbolism of this interesting wonky image, yeah, maybe being grounded means being best suited to where I am. Maybe it's just about being present wherever I might be, land, sea, or air. Maybe it's about knowing that there is never one place. You can never, that's part of um, like being okay with not ever being in one place alone, if that makes sense. That there will always be elements, there will always be things shifting underneath our feet a little bit. And if we can find, if I can find a kind of balance with that, if I can find a strength in that, um, then I will feel I will feel that simplicity when I maybe I'll have a sense of that calm of that ease of just being able to accept. So is that me? Am I the little embroidered figure? <sighs> Stroking my imaginary beard, folks. And that's how we end today's Facebook pop-up archive. <laughs>
Uh, much love to everybody out there. Take care of yourselves. Keep staying indoors if that's what you got to do. Um, staying indoors takes care of other folks. If you're out there working, please take care of yourselves. And don't be afraid to advocate for yourself if your work environment is not taking care of you in the way that they should. Okay, if you need help with that, you can always reach out and we'll connect you with folks who can help you with that. If you're out there doing the work of saving people, helping people, providing for people, helping people feel connected, helping people feel safe, even though sometimes that means you're not as safe as you could be, I send lots of love your way, lots of gratitude, so much gratitude. Thank you. And I'm really looking forward, of course, to the day where we see each other again in person. And uh, for the meantime, thanks for spending time with me. And thank you for being amazing, folks. We'll see you again soon next Tuesday, next Wednesday, and maybe even before then. You never know. All right? Have a wonderful afternoon and keep on creating and listening to those birds.